In the news, tension as military hunts killers of 11 soldiers. President of Rwanda receives report on France's role in genocide. Every living U.S. president pays respect to Prince Philip. In business, Alibaba fines $2.8 billion on competition charge in China. And in sports, Mbappe waiting game continues. Details shortly. <music> Hello, this is TOS Television, your digital affairs pan African news network. I'm Musa Zeh and this is TOS News 360. The traditional ruler of Lere in Kaduna State, Abubakar Mohamed, is dead. The sad king Lere died in, at 76, Abubakar Mohamed. A retired general died on Saturday morning in Kaduna. Many family members of the deceased traditional ruler told newsmen that he died after a brief illness. The remains of the emir have been laid to rest in Lere town this Saturday. Lagos State Government has eased restrictions on social and event centers with immediate effect. Commissioner for Tourism, Arts and Culture, Uzamat Akimbili Yusuf, and Director General of the Lagos State Safety Commission, Larry Mojola, made the announcement on Friday. According to Mojola, Governor Babajide Sanlu gave the approval after due consultation and deliberations with relevant stakeholders and ministries, departments, and agencies. The exit of the outgoing Director General Michael Imodu National Institute of Labor Studies, Kwara State, Saliu Alabi, was on Friday greeted with drama as workers of the Institute under the ages of non-academic staff, Union of Educational and Associated Unions, NASU, on Friday, bidding farewell with a protest. The workers alleged that the five-year tenure of Alaji Alabi was characterized with maladministration. The placard carrying protesters urged the federal government and the Ministry of Labor to appoint a new director general that would effect a positive turnaround in the institute. Community leaders in Kun Shisha local government area of Benue State and the military authorities were on Friday locked in a dispute following claims that dozens of locals were killed by soldiers on a revenge mission to the area. While some residents alleged that up to 20 residents were killed, the Imbato community in Shangevchev of the local government area of Benue State put the casualty figure at 70. Acting Inspector General of Police Usman Akali Baba has announced new postings, appointments, and reappointments of top police commanders. The IGP in a statement signed by Force Public Relations Officer C.P. Frank Mba announced the posting of AIG Afiz Inoua as the Force Secretary and member of the Force Management Team. The IGP also approved the reappointment of CP Frank Mba and acting CP Idowu Owuhunwa as the Force Public Relations Officer and Principal Staff Officer to the IGP, respectively. This is your Digital Affairs Pan African News Network Test Television. You're watching News 360. More stories coming right after the break. <music> Thank you so much for staying with us. The police in Lagos have arrested two robbery suspects for allegedly breaking into a warehouse at Alaba International Market and stealing goods worth 3 million naira. This is contained in a statement released by Muyuwa Adejobi, the Lagos police spokesperson. The suspects, Naji Emmanuel and Christian Chuku, were arrested on Thursday while moving the stolen goods from the warehouse, the police spokesperson said. They were arrested by police operatives attached to Ojo Division and the stolen goods recovered from them. Moving on to stories around Africa, the ECOWAS Parliament will meet in Monrovia for the first time in 2021 to discuss ways of fostering women empowerment in the West African sub-region. The meeting, which will hold from April 
13 to 17, has the theme, Empowerment of Women in the ECOWAS Region. Speaker of the ECOWAS Parliament, Mohamed Tunis, will chair the meeting, which we see joint committees on social affairs, gender and women's empowerment slash education, science and culture. Sudan has said on Saturday that it received an Ethiopian offer to share details on the second filing of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, GERD. The official said the Ethiopian offer came amid preparations by Addis Ababa to store 1.6 billion cubic meters of water as a test of the dam gates before the plan filling in July. The official downplayed the importance of the Ethiopian offer in the absence of a binding agreement on the filling and operation of the GERD. At least two people were killed during violent protests on Friday against the United Nations peacekeeping mission in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, local officials said. According to Nicolas Kikuku, troops attached to the United Nations mission, known as MONUSCO, killed one person during the protest in the rural area of Ocha. The protesters set fire to two bridges that led to the peacekeepers' base. Rwanda's President Paul Kagame officially received the report of the Commission on France's role in the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda. French historian Vincent Duclerc handed it over to Kagame on Friday, April 9th. This follows the release of the report in Paris, France on March 26th, which was welcomed by the government of Rwanda, saying it was a step in the right direction. The team of experts and researchers was commissioned in 2019 by French President Emmanuel Macron to probe the then French government's role in the 1994 genocide in which over a million people were killed. You are still watching TS News 360. More stories after this time out. Welcome back now, we'll move to international stories. Prince Philip, Queen Elizabeth II's husband, died Friday at the age of 99. The report of his death was announced Friday by Buckingham Palace. A statement issued by the palace just after midday spoke of the Queen's deep sorrow following his death in Windsor Castle on Friday morning. The Duke of Edinburgh, the longest serving royal consort in British history, was at the Queen's side for more than her six decades of reign. Every living former U.S. president has paid their respects to the U.K.'s Prince Philip, who died on Friday at the age of 99. The current president, Joe Biden, who issued a statement in which he praised the Duke of Edinburgh's lifetime of service to the United Kingdom. Changes will allow U.S. officials to invite Taiwan officials into government buildings in Washington and attend meetings at the Taiwan mission. The easing of rules comes and soaring tensions between the United States and China on multiple. The State Department has announced that it will make it easier for U.S. officials to meet Taiwanese representatives, define pressure from China at a time of high tensions, and as the U.S. Congress considers sweeping legislation to counter Beijing's influence. Brazilian President Jay Bolsonaro on Friday blasted a pending Senate inquiry on his handling of a record-breaking COVID-19 outbreak with which global health officials compared to a raging inferno. Supreme Court Justice Luis Roberto Barroso ruled late on Thursday that enough senators had signed on to a proposed inquiry on the government pandemic response to launch the probe despite stolen by Senate leadership. Moving on to business, Alibaba Group, the world's biggest e-commerce company, was fined 18.3 billion yuan equivalent to $2.8 billion by Chinese regulators on Saturday for anti-competitive tactics as the ruling Communist Party tightens control over fast-growing tech industries. Party leaders worry about the dominance of China's biggest internet companies, which are expanding into finance, health services, and other sensitive areas. The party says anti-monopoly enforcement, especially in tech, is a priority this year. The State Administration for Market Regulation said Alibaba was fined for abusing its dominant position to limit competition by retailers that use its platform and hindering free circulation of goods. It said the fine was equal to 4% of its total 2019 sales of 455.712 billion yuan, which is equivalent to $69.5 billion. 
The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has received orders from the Federal High Court Abuja to freeze 194 bank accounts owned by Burundi chain firms and other organizations to conduct investigations into suspicious activities. This was disclosed by the Apex Bank as it published the three court orders on its website. The document, which was signed by the presiding judge A. R. Mohammed, empowered the CBN to direct the banks to freeze all the bank accounts for a period of 45 days only, pending the outcome of the investigation. This is your Digital First Ben African News Network TOS Television. You are watching News 360. Entertainment stories will come your way just right after this break. Thank you so much for staying with us. Now on to entertainment. Veteran Hollywood actor Chief Bruno Iwo has been confirmed dead. Bruno died after battling with diabetes for years. His painful death, which was made known by close associates and filmmaker Derek Zai, who revealed that the actor died at the National Hospital in Abuja. According to him, Chief Bruno has been in coma for about three weeks, and everything done to stabilize him couldn't bring him back to life. His remains has been deposited at the hospital mortuary. U.S. rapper and actor DMX has died at the age of 50, five days after suffering a heart attack. The performer, whose real name was L. Simons, had been placed on life support and died with his family by his side. In a statement, his family said he was a warrior who fought till the very end. L's music inspired countless fans across the world, and his iconic legacy will live on forever, they said. Moving on to sports, during PSG's 3-2 Three two Champions League win over Bayern Munich, Jamin Karaga made the surprising claim on commentary that Kylian Mbappe had never done it at the highest level. In all seriousness, there is a growing sense in some quarters that the young Frenchman has outgrown his native top flight. Losing both Mbappe and Neymar in one summer would be catastrophic for Mauricio Pochettino, but it's long been touted as a potential reality with just one destination in mind of the Brazilian is hood hunt of Barcelona. Sky in Italy reported that Daniel De Rossi, 37, is under observation at the Roman Institute for Infectious Diseases as a precaution. The former Roman male feeder tested positive along with three other staff and several players in the national camp during the international break. Daniel De Rossi, the former Italy, Daniel De Rossi, the former Italy captain and the national team's technical coach was hospitalized after testing positive for COVID-19 during last month's World Cup qualifiers, according to Sky in Italy. England and France players held a minute silent before their friendly and wore black armbands. The sporting world has been paying tribute to Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, who, was, who has died at age 99. Periods of silence were held before football matches, including Fulham's Premier League match against Wolves and England's women's friendly in France. And that is TOS News 360 on the Digital First Pan African News Network. For more updates, visit our website www.tostvnetwork.com. Do follow and like TOS Television Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And remember to subscribe on YouTube. Do stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS Television. I'm Osanze Isesele. Thanks for watching and have a blessed weekend.